I might as well just have called this one Absent Daddy Issues the Show. So, overdue Doctor Who review. It's finally flowing smoothly off my tongue. That sounded really dirty. I should retake that. And I won't. So, I'm up to this episode, and this one I was both not looking forward to, but also really curious about, because I am on record more than a few places of not really liking this episode very much. And, like, to be fair, I think in some ways my historical distaste for this episode is amplified, possibly unfairly, by how much other people seem to really love it. There's something inherently frustrating about not liking something and not understanding why no one else around you sees the faults in it. I like to think I'm a little more fair than I used to be, though, and I haven't rewatched this episode in ages. I'm, and when I say ages, I mean I haven't rewatched it since I myself became a father. So I think if this thing was ever going to have a shot at hitting me better than um, it had up to this point, this was going to be it. So, having now watched it, it is better than I have given it credit for in the past. Um, particularly in regards to the emotional element of it. Pete Tyler is actually a really great character, um, both in and of himself, but also especially in his interactions with Rose, particularly. They are really touching and heartfelt, and I like how intelligent he is. I like his ability to work things out and figure out what's going on, not because he's a genius, but because he can. he's paying attention and putting his mind to the problem, and it never feels like they are overstating his ability to figure things out, and it feels like it plays fair with that element, and his decision to go out in front of that car is well played. His recognition of what the doctor was trying to spare her from, but that he has to do because he's her father and as much as he may want to protect her from all the hazards of the world, sometimes, you know, he can't, he, sometimes he has to protect her from herself. You know, it's, it's well played and it's nice and it's very touching. That doesn't mean I now like this episode, because overall, I still don't. So I, I wanted to acknowledge that up front, that the, I do get that element. And I get that if that particular element hits you hard enough, it can override other issues with the story. I get that. I have thing. I have you know episodes of Doctor Who, books, movies in general that will have something in them that I like so much that it either renders me um, incapable of noticing the other faults, or I am more forgiving of them. That's it's. I can't. <laughs> I can't with this. I think my biggest frustration is the Reapers. So the, the, those are the monsters of this thing. And I, I kind of hate the way in which this episode tries to do broken time. I hate these things. I think they're dumb. I think they look stupid. I think the idea is very poorly delved into. I don't think that they add anything, and I think they actively detract. I think it would have been so much better. I mean, you still, you do the paradox, you do time is broken, you do things are coming apart, people are vanishing, the world outside is, you know, fading away maybe, but to literally weaponize that into monsters is, I'm sorry, it's dumb. It's dumb. And it just, it, it actively detracts because instead of this potentially what we could have had slow creeping sense of things being wrong, little things being off like the phone call or, you know, boy, there aren't many people, huh? Where is everybody? And, you know, the doctor coming to that realization and, you know, maybe even just like one shot of they look down the street and at a certain point down the street, there's nothing. Like literally nothing, there's a void. 
and realizing that that's encroaching in on them because they are effectively the center of the paradox and everything's closing in on them. I feel like that would have been a much more effective way to give us the ticking clock that was necessary to force the hand and keep things moving forward without literally having friggin' time monsters. I really hate these things. And it it doesn't help that I don't even, I can't even give it the benefit where it's like, oh, well, it's a kind of original idea. Well, no, it's the friggin' Langoliers from the Stephen King miniseries, and they weren't very good there either. I know they're not literally the same thing, but I can't see this and not think of that. And it didn't work there either, but at least when I saw that, it was an original idea that didn't work. Now, it's a derivative idea that still doesn't work. So, I mean, most of my problems with this episode keep coming back to them. I don't like the need to have a monster because I feel like every time we cut away from the emotional impact of, you know, Pete realizing what's going on and the fact that he's not alive and Rose trying very hard to, to paint a rosy picture for him and lying to him about what she means to him in the future, Every time we cut away from that, to have a monster outside the church go, rah, rah, it saps the moment. It kills it dead. I really, I hate these friggin' things. And they're all over the episode. Like, as soon as the paradox starts, we get our first, like, POV with red, wibbly vision of these things, and I immediately groaned. I can't help but groan, because they don't help the story. Literally the only thing that they do that just off the top of my head, because I, I didn't sit down and think a lo long and hard about this before recording this video. The only thing I can't think of off the top of my head is how you remove the doctor specifically from the circumstances. They do accomplish that, but I'd like to think that the writers of Doctor Who are more clever than I am and give it a little bit more time than, you know, 10 minutes after having finished an episode of having watched it, that they would be able to come up with a better idea. And the fact that I can't think of how they would do that doesn't mean that there was no other way to do it than to have a monster eat him. <sighs> I'm going to try and dial it back because I feel like right now it sounds like I'm hating on this episode for more than it's worth. Because like I said, this is overall... Actually, you know, I said it was better than I remember. I'm not sure the episode's better than I remember it. What is good about the episode is stronger than I remember it. But the things that don't work really don't work. And there were some things that my mind had exaggerated. Like my memory of Rose getting handed the baby was that it happened much more slowly. My memory of that was much more, you see, you know, Pete starts to hand her the baby and she's like huh and the baby's there it's like and she had been lectured by the doctor don't touch the baby and you know exemplifying you know how it's going to make the situation they're in already worse and my memory was that that moment was more dragged out her being handed the baby and i and i hated my memory version of that because i'm like how are you just sitting there letting him hand you this baby um in in reality it played much faster. Um, I kind of wish they hadn't done a cutaway to the doctor going, Rose, no, and starting to run because that did make it feel like a longer moment than it actually was. So there are things like that where I think it's healthy for me to come back and rewatch these and realize, oh, that thing that I thought was like a real big issue, or at least was a hang up for me, uh, my memory isn't actually accurate on that. So, I mean, it's nice to realize that in some ways it doesn't have all of the faults that I have thought that I have tended to think that it has, but those friggin' monsters, man, I just, it's, it, especially for a show that has a tendency to, uh, especially in the early, you know, series, to get hung up on the monster of the week. And this, honestly, this came up last episode that I reviewed with the long game, because the Jagra Fest doesn't help either. He's also distracting. There's just this insertion of a monster because there's like a presumption that we have to have a monster every story. And I've now had two stories in a row where to an increasing degree, the monsters not only don't help, I think the story would have been actively better without them. So, yeah, it's just, it's frustrating because I feel like I have a better recognition of what does work.
here. And I think uh, Billy Piper gives a great performance in sort of showing, wanting to find that connection with a father that she's never known. And I think she plays that well. Peter, I already mentioned, does great work. Um, and the Doctor does good with his bits. He's much more background here than he often is, but he's still good. Um, and the, the performances overall are fine. It's just these friggin' things. I'm so glad they've never come back. I've seen people, like, on occasion, as paradoxes have come up with other stories of Doctor Who, they're like, I wonder why the Reapers don't show up, because it's a paradox and they're supposed to sterilize the wound. Like, I don't care what the narrative explanation is for them not showing up. I'm so glad these things have never shown up again. God, I hate them. So that'll wrap up my coverage of Father's Day. What are your thoughts on it? Whatever they are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. I know historically I've been on the minority side uh, in terms of my opinion of this episode. I don't know if uh, my ranting this angrily uh, explains it better or just makes me look like more of a jackass about it. I don't know. Let me know. Um, so there's a whole bunch of links down there like buttons and stuff and they take you places there's a link to the patreon plus a whole bunch of other stuff check it out if you feel like it and remember folks regardless of whether you look at that stuff or not you are the council i just run the meetings and until next time this council is adjourned